Welcome back to CFP Nation. I'm your host, Dino Brown. I got my right-hand man, Deep Fry Draft, Brian Bosage. Sooner or later, there's going to be some positivity, and that is what my man said. <laughs> but when we're on the screen together. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Hopefully sooner than later. But us two on the screen together, you know the deal. It's the Garnett Roos. My man, how are we doing tonight? Oh, man, I'm doing good. Uh we was talking before we went on air. Got a little family trick or treating in last night. Yep. Got that. Uh, we did. Well, we didn't record at our normal day, so we're recording on Wednesday this week. So it's uh, another day to think about it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, then I get tempted with all this candy that I have in my house now. So <sighs> it'll be a uh, yeah, temptation in South Carolina. A long, a long weekend of uh, sitting at the desk. Yeah. Candy yes. in the drawer. Yes, 100%. I've already scoured the good ones. I left them the rest, you know? Um, <sighs> you ready for this rapid fire? Let's, let's do it, man. Let's just get right into it. All right, here we go. Drake May or Caleb Williams? I love that you're appealing to my draft side of this uh, <laughs> on, on this show. I'll say this. Uh, it's gotten a lot closer for me during this season than I thought it would. I was all in on Caleb Williams being this tank, do everything you can. And he may still end up being that way, but there's some, uh, there's some hits in the armor there that's starting to show. And it's not dissimilar from what we've seen with Spencer Rattler in South Carolina, but a much more, obviously a better prospect of a passer uh, right. with Williams over over Rattler. But some of the same things are popping up for Caleb Williams in the last few weeks. And we had a stat last week on the Draft Countdown podcast that we talked about with Caleb Williams, where in games where he plays against a top 25 opponent, his numbers are significantly down uh, compared to you know other games. Yeah. So is it concerning? I, I don't see how it's not. But you don't exactly I, – I, I don't have the data – to look at that for all the other quarterback prospects we've seen over the years. I mean, just off the top of my head, I'd like to thank Joe Burrow as a senior. Obviously, his numbers against everybody that year were through yeah. the roof. Right. You know, and to and the Alabama quarterbacks, right. they play top 25 games every uh -huh. week, right? So I, I don't have the data, but it, it doesn't look great. But right. with Drake May, he has some of the same warts. Uh -huh. uh, well, he has warts, I should say. He did, Maybe not some of the same, but he has warts as well. Yeah. Maybe they're not the be all end all quarterback prospects. I think we thought they were. They're still going to go both. They're still going to go in the top five. Yes. But right now, I'm still leaning Williams over May. I, I love that. that was, there was nothing rapid about that answer. I'm that's, that, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I just all day today, uh, I've been seeing on, you know, on Twitter and, and social media, the Drake May has now surpassed new QB1 in the class. And yeah, there's chinks in both of their armors. Um, I think. The same questions that I had last year about Drake May down the stretch, I'm having the same questions about Drake May this year as we're coming down the stretch. I'm not taking away what the kids got, but the questions I have haven't been answered, and we're, we're going in back-to-back -back seasons of the same thing. So I love that you alluded to Rattler because I think that is an issue with Caleb. They have no offensive line, right? He's getting smoked. He's getting tired of getting hit, and just like Shadur. Nice to doors to getting and getting smoked every game. You see him in the third quarter gasping for air. These guys, um, there's no excuse for how they act and how they handle themselves. But yeah, I I think a little bit of that upfront stuff is kind of getting to them as as we come down the stretch. So uh, I love that you are. Uh, I'm with you on your answer. Okay, I still think it's Caleb at one for right now. Right. We talked early in the year when it was really 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 ugly. I mean, there's ugliness, but the lines ugliness was real bad the first couple of weeks. We did a quick uh, guesstimation, as we would say, and we said over 40. We're at 30 currently. Are we still going over 40? Do you think they can keep it on, though? It's going to be close. I, I'm i not sure how much Jacksonville State is going to get to him this week, and we'll talk about that uh, in the game breakdown a little bit later. But you still got – I don't know what – if Vandy's – how much Vandy right. will get to him. But Kentucky's got some dudes up front. J.J. Mm -hmm. Weaver, Oxendine, those are some big guys. Uh, Clemson's got some dudes up front with Xavier Thomas and some of those guys, and their linebackers can blitz well. Do, uh, let, let's revisit this after their next two games, when they okay. after they play Jack State and Vandy, 
and we'll see what the number is leak going into the Kentucky and Clemson games, and that'll push it over. Right now, I'm inclined to say under right now, but I, I want to see how they handle two defensive lines they should handle, even with whatever mash unit they're throwing out there this week. Yeah, man, I love mash. Mash is such an underrated show, by the way. <laughs> Kudos for you to drop a mash. That was a great show. Um, Vanderbilt could be – Vanderbilt is kind of like – Hit or miss, right? Sometimes they show up against these big games and play well. Georgia, they played well for like three quarters. Uh, and then they, you know, obviously, cream rises to the top and, and, and Georgia obviously pulled away. If they play like they played against Georgia, we we might be talking a little bit of the over before we get to those big games. So right, right. we'll have to wait and see. All right. Who has a better inaugural SEC season, OU or Texas? I'm going to lean Texas because I think they're going to be more set at quarterback than what Oklahoma will be. Okay. So just based on that, I, I'm going to lean Texas. I'm not sure who uh, Oklahoma is going to have. I'm not, I don't think Dylan Gabriel has a year left. Maybe he does. I it's, don't know. It'll be Jackson Arnold. Right. So, so you're going to go with a young guy there. Texas yeah. will either Murphy or. I, mean, I don't I think mean, Quinn could, comes back. Do you? I I, I don't know. I I, really, <laughs> I don't know that he's necessarily ready for the NFL either. So is he going to transfer? I I, I that I that's a whole steps this year. That's a whole topic for another show. But. Right. <laughs> so I I'm going to lean Texas here, but I don't okay. I don't have a good answer. All right, well, that's fair. I just I figured you know coming in they, they they're going to be the two. Uh, I'd say target teams, right? Everybody's going to be gunning for them when they're on the schedule. So uh, I wanted to see who you felt was built better. I think, you know, I, I like the way you went with, you know, the quarterback kind of not as question E, you know. All right. You, you got one here for me, I'm assuming. This is the I last did. one. Come on. What is, what is your favorite South Carolina uniform combination? Because I know you're a big Oregon guy, so you're yeah. used to a different uniform combination every week. And South Carolina seems to be doing the same thing. So, what is your favorite South Carolina uniform combination? All right, so I'm, 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 I'm I went through a few. I, I, I think I seen eight or nine that I, I kind of was that are relevant. I, I'm a fan. South Carolina's funeral. I call it the funeral. The all black, the black helmet, black jersey, black pants, just the stripe. That for me, I think, is one of the cleanest ones that they have going out there. Like Oregon came out. I think it was this week with the all black helmet, right? They played with. So that that's closest to that one. But that battle one that they wore, that was kind of like a, I don't, I don't know what it was. It had like a digital camo look into it a little bit. It was like all white or grayish. I, it was odd. Like I think they 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 highlighted that that silverish gray that they have in the uniform. I'm a fan of that one. I like that. One. The white see, helmet thing just seems too clean for me. See, I don't like anything that involves a color that's not on their wheel. If it's not garnet, black or white, I don't. I don't want it. So that's what the any of the gray stuff I immediately throw in the dumpster. To me, the best uniform combination they have, and this is strictly it has to be with a certain helmet, is okay. garnet pants, garnet jerseys, garnet helmets, but it has to be the helmet that has the white around where the the old the old helmet style where the helmet was garnet, but the logo is in the white circle. If it's not that helmet, then I'll go white helmet, garnet, garnet. But so white uh, helmet throws me off. I know that's like the staple, you know what I'm saying? But I just feel like I don't know. I I'm do the, love the stormtrooper look though, the all white. I, 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 so they look fast to me when they wear that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you that. that that's, a, I wish that they had like the black helmet has that matte finish, right? There's yeah. no shine to it. Yeah, see, I like that a lot. I'm, I'm, I just like it's like see, I call it the funeral look. They're coming in to handle business. Get in, get out, leave the body, come high, go home with a W. You know what I mean? That white helmet with just the C, yes, is the worst helmet I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I call it last year at the Senior Bowl. Um, what was the deep? Why can I think of his name? The defensive lineman Zach Pickens. Yes. He wore that at the Senior Bowl, and I asked him that after uh, I asked him that at the Meet the Players or uh, our media day. I was like, "Why did you wear that garbage helmet?" He said, "Man, it's just what they gave me." Oh, that's terrible! <laughs> it's such a gar, it's such a trash helmet. 
They don't get to pick their own helmet going for like a showcase game like that. You know no. what I mean? All right. This is it. I, I'm I am a fan that this got supplemented in to the show as we went forward. And if you don't know, we can see the smile on both of our faces. We're on Hobble Watch here. Brian, talk to me about Hobble Watch. We're, we're there. I think we've docked. We're, we're, and we're, we're, we have docked. And we're, we're seeing the boat at the harbor now full time. And uh, he was the de facto number one receiver this week. Leggett, he wasn't himself this week. I, I Was it a concussion? Was it actually an upper body injury? I don't know. Whatever it was. He wasn't himself against Texas A&M this week. But so uh, coming off what was said to be his best week of practice, Harbor was, a, like I said, the, the number one wide receiver for all intents and purposes this yeah. week, was targeted eight times, had six catches for 59 yards, 32 yards after the catch. Uh, their confidence in him is obviously growing. They On the very first drive of the game, Rattler went to him on a third down, and he dropped it. Yeah. You immediately go to the sidelines. The first person there is Rattler waiting on him, talking to him, saying, we're going to go back to you, big fella. Yeah. And the very next drive on another big third down play and a tight, just, just a <laughs> bullet throw in a tight window, he goes right back to Harbor. He makes the catch, gets the first down. So you know right there that tells you Rattler believes in this yeah. kid. And you've got it here in the stat. He had – of his six catches against five different defensive backs, three yeah. plays went over 10 yards. He had a long catch of 26. Most targets of anybody in the wide receivers, 107 snaps in the last two weeks, 73 coming in the passing game. He is here now. He is a starter now. And on this week's depth chart, he's listed as a starter along with uh, Leggett and uh, I believe Omega Blake. Is Which listed. is odd, right? Because it, well, it goes – Brown's out. Amari right? and Brown's still out. Yeah. So that, that's why Omega Blake's listed as a third starter. And they're a three wide receiver team. So what happened to my buddy Eddie? Where did Eddie go? Like you don't use him no more, right? They use uh, him Eddie, like Eddie drops the ball a lot. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed or not. They re I don't know how much they even trust Eddie in the punt return game. Anymore. I was gonna say I haven't seen him at all. Like he's I still back there at punt return, but he has not tried to return one. He's basically back there to catch the ball. Yeah. Uh and Eddie Lewis is uh felling out of Falling out of favor, I do believe. But yes, it's it's great to see this with Nick Harbor, and I think we're just going to keep the cinch. I, I'm I'm thinking he I I'm I'm going to call it right now. He's going 100 plus this week. I I, 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 I was going to ask you, but I think this you know the, it's prime. I did. Yeah, we complained a lot because they needed help. We knew, but I, we knew exactly. We knew the type of talent he had and what we could get from him. But I think. In hindsight, they may have done it right, right? Give him his big game against kind of like a, and I'm not disrespecting Jack State, but a fluff competition. It's not SEC talent, right? You're not, you're not going right. against, you know, these NFL caliber dudes every week. He's getting a little bit of fluff, and we've seen Jack State allow a lot of Sam Houston put up a, a boatload of points on him. And no disrespect to Sam Houston, but they still covered though. They did. They, they did cover. They did. I think they covered what five or uh, seven of nine? Yes. So uh, I'll take those odds any day of the week, but I think this is the game he's gonna really break out. You know, have that like that Luther Burden type moment. You know, where, where we get a big contested catch in the end zone for a tutty, get him that hundred. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I'm with you. All right, this is uh, one of my favorite segments, but I don't know if this is gonna be a fun segment this week. But uh, let's talk the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think I have the only good thing to say this week. Um, outside of what we spoke about, about the hobble watch, but what's the good, my friend? <laughs> when I wrote, when I wrote this up on Sunday and I, I try to do this on Sunday every day, cause while the stuff's still fresh in my yeah. mind, I, I wrote the good is there is no good to speak of, is it? <laughs> but I calmed down a little bit. And today, once I saw this, I'm like, well, we've got to talk about this. So Jalen Kilgore today yeah. was amongst 14 players named as a semifinalist for the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year Award. Kilgore's played above and beyond yeah. uh, this year as a true freshman. Uh, he's had some ups, he's yeah. had some growing pains, ups and downs, but for the most part, he's been a very positive player. Uh, I don't know if he'll – I doubt he wins this award because I, I didn't even see who the other 13 nominees were, but I'm going to assume it's going to go to an offensive player that's racking up big numbers. But that's generally how they just work. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but good, good for him. Uh, to be nominated, and you wanted to talk about Debo Williams a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, as I, 
when I see something that says, is there any good? I went and I'm like, all right, let me, I saw him a little bit. He seemed to be involved more this game. And we're going to get into some new faces that were involved in, in this game later on in the show. I think this kind of was, I'm going to say it's the best game of the season. I, I think so. I think so. And it, he's he's been involved in their pressure packages for a little while now, but he actually seemed to get home a little bit this week a lot more. Uh, Texas A&M, to their credit, they don't believe in leaving guys in to block. They, they trust their five guys. Yep. South Carolina took advantage of it early. It didn't last the whole game. but uh, And Debo Williams was available to do that. 11 total tackles, eight solos, broke up a pass. Uh, last three weeks, he's had five pressures and 36 tackles. I mean, he's playing well. Yeah. Probably the best collegiate football <laughs> player right now from the state of Delaware. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just – I, I don't know. I don't know much. Uh, I don't know many other players from Delaware, or that yeah. played high school. That played high school football in Delaware, I should say, because I guess Marshawn Lloyd's technically from Delaware, but he played at Dematha, so we we yeah. don't count that. Speaking of Marshawn Lloyd, his his season total from last year is about to get surpassed by uh, our guy Mario Mario Hansen, uh very soon. But but not what his season total is this year. Out no 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 no. I said last year he was in a, he was in a game box yes. uniform last yes. year. So yes, yes. um yeah. Listen, we pounded beat the horse about having no pressure from the linebacking group or the edge, and it seems as though last week slightly and this week they seem to kind of figure it out. Yeah, somewhat. Brian Thomas uh, off the edge was having a great first quarter, and then breaks two fingers in his hand it's, and he went back out there, but you could tell he wasn't, nah, no. you know, it wasn't the same. Right. They probably just taped them together and just, yeah. to just go. And Robin, then but, the whole game, you know, can't right. grab anything. So right. yeah, the bug has been bad. The bug yeah. has been bad. All right. Speaking of the bad, give me the bad from this game against A&M. Kai Kroger, man. Oh. What happened? What happened to this guy? Was on the Ray guy watch list coming? I thought he was one of the best punters in college football last year. He's just been so inconsistent this year. He last year dropping punts inside the 20 like every game. This year, only 11 all season. He's yeah. 30, 36 yards net a game. Gross. Yeah. Or per punt. It's just gross. 43 yards a punt. It's not going to get it done. And he's shanking the ball at the most inopportune times yeah. this year. It's like when when they can't afford to have a bad punt, he's dropping one in plus territory. And it's just not it's not working out this year at all. I feel like when the pressure's on him, he's giving him like you know field position at the forty. It's like right. on, like what's what's going on? Last year, right? He was like extremely accurate. Right. right? This guy don't even have a touchback all season. That's you know. <laughs> Nothing. We're not. We we can't really get into it tonight. But their whole special teams, which was their bread and butter last year, right? As a whole, has been bad. We talked about Eddie, year. right? He was right. The terrible. whole the whole deal, the whole special teams unit is a big disappointment this year. Uh, like I said, we can talk about that later, but not tonight. Uh, yeah. Another bad thing last week: Texas A and M four of four Ugh. on fourth down conversions. Uh, three times. On fourth and one, they're successful. Why? They get under center <laughs> with their big quarterback <laughs> and sneak. What do we do on a fourth and one? Spencer Rattler seven yards back there, and the guard that's playing center now because you got nobody else <laughs> rolls the ball back to him <laughs> like he's trying to hit the seven ten split. <laughs> so how do you not? have a practice segment every week where this is all we're going to do. You're going to snap. You're going to put your hands under his butt and go forward. And Mario Anderson and whoever else is back there is going to push you because Spencer Rattler is not a small cat. No. If Dylan Gabriel could pull it off. Right. Can can we just line him up like you on the ceiling and just tell him, Find this cre- the crease. Just go left or right to the crease, and someone will push you the extra couple of feet to get the first down. Like I, I, I don't understand. Or maybe the guy that's two hundred plus pounds, it's been averaging close to five, you know, four and a half, five yards per carry when he's getting the ball. Maybe, just maybe. <laughs> or hear me out. The uh, the ex quarterback that you have either playing yeah. running back 
or the one that you have playing wide receiver. Right. Let them do it. Doby, right? Yeah. Doty, yeah. What did he play? What did he play last week? Uh, he had he had one catch, <laughs> so he did. He is back at wide receiver this week. So I guess I guess I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a coin flip. Uh, another thing I want to talk about was the drops. Uh, it seemed like you you can't, you got it clocked at three. It seemed like a lot more to me. I, I don't know. Uh, it was spread out though, like between yeah. three different receivers. So it made yeah, it look Harbor like- had a drop. Leggett had a drop. Uh, Tyquan Russell had a drop. That one was gross. That, that one was, was not- really that <laughs> one was really bad. That was him. That was a freshman trying to run up field before he caught the football, and he had a big gain or two, man. And oh, that was yeah. a big gainer coming, and it's yeah. it's just bad news. Uh, another bad thing last week. We talk about the defense a lot. Um, it's just it, they didn't give up the really big chunks outside of the one. Anaya Smith play where he just how did he, did you see the the tweet where they said this is our annual how did this guy score a touchdown tweet yes. and he's surrounded by four jerseys of the opposite color and somehow he ends up scoring uh you Anaya it. Smith I, I did I, I did say he was going to have a big game and he did have the biggest game of all the A and M wide receivers yeah. but they you know, outside of that play they didn't get really any chunk plays but they just couldn't get off the field right. You know, Texas A&M, and m and and that they had long sustained drives. South Carolina didn't. Big right. difference. That's probably the biggest difference in the game. You know, so that is yeah. what it is. I just, I would hope that you know, after you watch the same movie every every day, every week, you would try to you, you would expect to know what the outcome is going to be. But I feel right. like they just they can't they they expect every week that it's going to change. We're going to roll out the same package, play the same game, get leave the same things that were not good at open, and hope that we're going to come out with a different outcome. <sighs> All right, give me the ugly. I thought that was ugly, but give me lot, the ugly. <laughs> a lot of a lot of ugly this week. Uh, I tweeted out during the game, can we appeal to the NCAA to allow <laughs> midseason transfer portals open just so we can get some offensive linemen in here? South Carolina in this game, Trey Jones is hurt. And he may end up playing this week. So maybe his injury wasn't it was bad enough to keep him out the rest of the game, but he might play this week. Uh, he was the 11th different offensive lineman to suffer an injury at some point in time this season. That's crazy. If he can't start – they will almost assuredly start their ninth different offensive line combination. And if you're scoring at home, this will be the ninth football game. This is crazy. Not good. No, no consistency. No, no, can't get no like, you know, rhythm. No. Um, I want to give a hat tip to at Cinderella, Cinderella with a S underscore SC tweeted out. And I, I just want to touch on this. Said it took four games. For the staff to realize that Mario Anderson was the best running back on this team. It took eight games to start Harbor at wide receiver. Both guys were playing behind current and former quarterbacks. Make it make sense. Uh, oh, and I put on this, who does that fall on? Does it fall on, you know, our, our boy <laughs> at the OC there, Loggins? Or, or, or does it fall on Beamer? Because he's got to take some heat because – he has to see what we see every damn Saturday, right? And and there was no no adjustment. Ultimately, it falls on Beamer, right? Because he's at the top. So yes. everything done under him. But to me, initially, this is the quarter uh the running backs coach has to know that Mario Anderson's is the guy better than DK Joyner. You have to see that. And Justin Stepp, the wide receiver coach, has to see that we've got it's my job to get right. this big freak on the field and play. So initially I think it starts positionally. Uh, then it comes to Dahl Loggins and then to Shane Beamer. But like I said, ultimately it all starts with the, with the mate, with the general, right? Yeah. And then it falls downhill. And, and <laughs> falls downhill. So with, with Mario Anderson, what I did read was, uh, and, and it was Loggins that was talking about it, was that Anderson didn't have confidence in his pass pro. So he didn't know when to, Block, get off, and be able to chip and be be a, a receiving asset to the quarterback. He didn't have that for the first couple of weeks. I guess 
somewhere along the line inside of clicking, he felt more comfortable. We saw that kind of take over. Right. Down the road. So maybe that was the, the main thing. And, and, and that's fair. Because if you can't pass block, especially with this team with an yeah, offensive lineman line, that can't yeah. pass block, <laughs> yeah. uh, you're probably not going to see the field. So that's fair with Anderson. With Harbor, though, they should have no been wrote, they should have been getting this guy 10 snaps a week. Especially minimum. with Wells, because if he's getting 10 snaps a week, then you're not rushing Wells right. back, right? right. And maybe right. now Wells is playing fully healthy because he doesn't have to come back and re-injure the foot. <laughs> right. So it's talk that he could be back within the next couple of weeks. We'll see. For the final Wells. two, maybe? Yeah. Juice Wells, maybe. All right. Uh you know, we we bag on the defense a lot. I don't think we bag on the offense enough. <laughs> and this stat, three straight road games. <sighs> Their total offense at Tennessee, 333 yards. Yeah. At Florida, 286 yards. At AM, 209 yards. It's not all the defense. No, no, it's not. And 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 I'm not one to make excuses. But I wrote here in the notes. Rattle's gotta be tired. He's gotta be tired of getting hit. He's got no time to breathe. And and, and I truly believe this. And I had a conversation about this a little earlier when I started to see Carson Beck falling in at 50 in this draft, right, coming up, I truly believe that this offensive line has hurt his draft stock. Yeah. Because he's played pretty damn good this year, right, for what he's – there's probably been maybe one and a half games where I was like, oh, we're getting a little flash. But he's been able to just write the ship and go back to it. I would take – and I'll, you can clip this, hot take it, come at me on the X. I don't give a shit. I would take a Spencer Rattler right now on an NFL team over Carson Beck right now. Kill me if you want. I'm going Rattler. Flip flop the two. Oh, you put, put him on Carson Georgia? Beck, could put Carson Beck on South Carolina's team. Put Spencer Rattler on Georgia's team. Who's having the better season? Oh, Rattler by by uh, not even not even blow close. away Beck's numbers this year. Yeah. Blow him away. Carson Beck to me, and I'll take heat for this. I don't think Carson Beck's coming out this year anyway. I don't think so either. Thank you. But I'll I'll take some heat for this, and I'll say Carson Beck is bigger Stetson Bennett. That's what I'm saying. But that's a Bennett won the big games. Right. He and, won the big games. Well, Beck will have his out. chance. Beck will have his chance, to be fair. He hasn't he played in the big games yet. No, right. Because right, their schedule's been ass up to this point. So, Which is another reason why I, I, I think Sets is, at this point is better because he there were times where there was no wide receivers. Man, These dudes weren't performing. And Stetson was finding a way to manage them to a W, right? Just spreading the ball. Granted, he had Bowers. And so did Beck for a little bit this year. But, like, I, I don't see it. I'll take Rattler every single Saturday and Sunday over Carson Beck right now. Now, in two years, hey, it might be a different story. But right now, we're going into a draft. I, I'm going I'm going Rattler. And that isn't because I'm on the Garnett Roost. That's because I watch college football every week right. and I can see the product. Right. Uh, last thing on the ugly, uh, Spencer Rattler – Three intentional grounding penalties in the second quarter alone. Uh, in the, those three drives, South Carolina at this point up seven to nothing in the game. They have a three play drive minus eight yards, a three play drive minus 11 yards, a three play drive minus four yards. Those were the three drives that all ended with intentional grounding penalties. Um, I'm with you here. Rattler's been sacked 30 times. You know, he's had enough, and I get it. He's He doesn't want to take. No many more, more hits. Yeah. And and I and I feel that. There's no excuse though. This is on Dole Loggins as much as it's on Spencer Rattler. You've got to have some sort of you know the pressure's coming. Where's the check? How down? do you not where's the check down? Where's the hot guy? Yep. Where's where's my that, my blanket? I need a safety blanket. You, I've been getting blown up and, all year. That and maybe that's a maybe that's another byproduct of having all the youth out there at wide receiver as well right now. Because you don't have Leggett. Leggett's the only guy out there that knows what he's doing, right? Right. So you you've got three receivers out on the route. You got Harbor, true freshman. Say Tyquan Russell's out there, true right. freshman, or Omega Blake, who's just now playing this year. You know, you don't They're have that, and, and you've got Knox or Simon in. They're blocking. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so especially Simon, he's and been... that could be part of it too. But I think it's on Loggins to to get some sort of some more. And I and I bet this week they'll have some more hots built in. They have, uh, to. they have to. Yeah, going it's, forward, you can't just leave them out there on an island. And 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 I think that your answer with the freshmen 
at wide or the inexperience at wide receiver, I think is is one hundred percent true because they don't know. Yeah, because they they don't know. They, they, they have don't no break idea. off a comeback. They don't yeah. know any of that. They just it's it, that that's something you learn. It's nuance. You don't have not. I say not every, not many wide receivers have that right away. Right, they gotta feel for QB, get a relationship, right. get you know what what he likes, what he doesn't like, when he's you know when he's coming out, and yeah, I, I'm with you. I bet would bet money, and this is no no disrespect to Rattler, but just because I bet they practice more with sellers, they would have more of a rapport on that hot with sellers than they would Rattler or the whoever the scout team type quarterback because that's where they were mostly probably playing. Earlier in the season, right, more on scout than they Especially were Hob- with the yeah, ones. Hob- Hobber yeah. and Snell has probably got a little bit of a, a groove already. Right. right. So, can't wait uh, to see it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait either. I can't. All right, let's let's get into a seems to be a, a, a weekly uh, hot buzz topic in in the positive direction. Uh, let's get into this recruiting roundup. Yeah, we got our first uh, twenty twenty five commitment from a familiar name, uh, Lenore Sellers' younger brother, uh, Jaden Sellers. Um, a, Three-star wide receiver, 5'11", 160, uh, committed to South Carolina this past week out of South Florence High School. Uh, played in three games this year, but he's caught 12 passes for 148 yards. This is more of a uh, developmental type player, I think, uh, down the road, a, a mold of clay. You know, you start with this guy. This ain't the five-star immediately going to rack up. This is the guy who's going to be on that scout team yeah. uh, for a year or two before you probably start seeing him. Uh, develop. You probably don't won't see him making any contributions till his hell. His brother might not even, uh, you know, yeah, be as, as here anymore. So yeah, ex- exactly. When he becomes relevant, Lamar right. could be somewhere else. But uh, good, to, good to get that uh, first guy in. Yeah. Uh, also, this week, the number three offensive tackle in the twenty twenty five class, uh, Solomon Thomas, out of Jacksonville, cut down to his top ten. South Carolina is amongst that, or else we wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, <laughs> along with LSU, Florida State, Miami, Georgia, Arkansas, Ohio State, Florida, Texas a and Tennessee. A lot of big hitters there Yeah, uh, you're competing with there. So we'll see how that goes. Also this week, uh, 2025 five-star defensive end, Sahir Mathis out of Emotep High School in uh, Philadelphia. South Carolina, by the way, has had some success at that high school. So that's why I'm young. I, I feel more confident yes. here than I did with uh, the other guy, Thomas. Yeah, no. uh, they cut down to his, he cut down to his top five. Uh, they're there with Ohio State, Florida State, Texas, and Tennessee. So again, big hitters. He's a 6'6", 230 pounder. Uh, this year, not got uh, 19 tackles, two tackles for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble in just five games uh, for Emotep Charter. We need pressure. Get him in there yeah. now. Put, put, yeah. put, you know. Yeah. Um, and then one of their big pickups in last year's class, uh, four-star defensive lineman uh, Xavier McLeod, uh, was dis- dismissed from the program. Uh, this is one of those you can't quit, you're fired situations, in my opinion here. I'm just reading the tea leaves here. Yeah. Um. His dad on social media, stay off social media, guys. Everybody, just stop. Yeah. Uh, said that uh, he came here to win. He don't like losing. He wanted to redshirt so he could get another year of eligibility at another school. Let's be honest. He was yeah. he was out of here anyway. Yeah. So he's trying to preserve his own year of eligibility here. Uh, they wanted him to travel to Missouri because that we talked about all the injuries. They need the depth. Uh, he refused to go. Didn't get on the plane to Missouri. Uh, when they got back, uh, he was dismissed from the program. Uh, everybody is basically, we wish you the best, and they're wishing the program the best. Everybody's just going to wipe their hands with this one. He's gone. Uh, you don't know what kind of player he was going to be. He hasn't really played a whole lot of snaps right. this year and very minimal impact uh, when he was in the game. But, you know, good luck to you. Yeah, I, I, we, I think we seen I seen this last year, uh, not with South Carolina, but with UCF. Uh, Plumlee went down, and I think Castellanos was hurt, and there was a red shirt. For, uh, he was on on like the last game of it. It was a bowl game, right? And, and, right. Well, the game before the bowl game, what it was? I think it was conference championship or something. And they needed him to play, and he was like, "Nah, man, 
I'm not playing because I'm it gives up my red shirt. And they put Plumley out there on literally like one leg. The dude was just he played the game. But I, I when you do stuff like that, it's a team sport. Like you yeah. literally just said, I don't give a shit about you guys. It's about me right now. That that's gonna that, that hits home no matter what team you go to, they're gonna see that. And unless you're a, a, a dude, it's hard to erase that. Right. And 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 but I, I, I see it. I, I see it from his side too. I do too. I do. But you but, sign up. You sign up knowing there's a chance right. to. So, it's wow. the whole whole. I didn't like losing. You, you think the other? You know, they love it. Eighty four guys on scholarship just love losing. No, you big think, dog. They don't. Spencer They're Rattler wants to fight and claw it every week trying to yeah. win. And that so that that part bothered me. That that's the youth in them. They don't. They haven't right you know, matured uh, yet. Yeah. All right, I got a segment here I want to talk about. A couple guys, uh, I'm going to call it new faces, all of a sudden showing up. Uh, we talked about them. They just didn't play <laughs> for some reason. We won't, we won't point figures at whose fault that is or why, but they're here now. Uh, Judge Collier started at right cornerback versus a 48 snaps. That's the most he's had all year. And my man finished with a clean sheet of paper. He wasn't targeted. Was that because he had tight coverage? We don't know. But he didn't give up any, you know, anything. He didn't miss any tackles. He had, I'm going to go with a very good game for a guy that we couldn't see for most of the season. Right. Um, he played those snaps because of Donald Fortune was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ego was hurt? Or... Well, he was of, hurt. I, yeah. I don't know. He didn't play a lot. No. So, no. Um, <laughs> I, I'm willing to give this guy more run. Yeah. Uh to see. Uh, even if it, it even if you want to keep fortune out on the outside, if it means moving Marcellus Dow into the nickel, I'm okay with that. Yes. Let's let him see. Cause we need we need because at this point I know uh Keenan Nelson is gonna move, he's gonna start in place of uh DQ Smith this week because he's he's gonna He's out the first half because of targeting call in the second half of the AM game. So Keenan Nelson's going to start in DQ Smith spot. So you may see a situation where Marcellus Dial kicks inside uh, to the nickel spot, uh, to at least in the first half, and you get more Judge Collier on the outside along with Fortune. Well, so I, I we'll like his game. Goes. He played yeah. well. Um, I'm like you said. I'm willing to give him another shot this week and and, and see what he brings to the table. If he can stack back to back. You know, above average performances. Let the kid run it out and, and see what's going. Because uh, fortune's bad fortune. I've had enough of it. Yeah. Okay. It's it's been ugly. Um, another guy who didn't play much, but these next two gentlemen I'm going to mention. You want to talk about capitalizing on the time that you are playing? Okay. We've been complaining for weeks about linebacker production. Linebacker Bam Martin Scott got his second most snaps all season with 21. And he was very productive in those snaps. Three pressures, a QB hit, two hurries. They struggled with getting pressure all year. Why did he not get any time earlier? I don't Former walk on, I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's probably why. <laughs> but when you're struggling and you can't get anything, I, right, right? You got to right. try something, right? You'll and, put the hungry guy out on the field, yeah. right? And they did yeah. this week, and, and, and look and, what happened. And paid off. Uh, you mentioned also in, in the notes here, Jerron yeah. Willis, Ole Miss yeah. transfer. He had a good game, and he only played eight snaps. Yeah. But so now we've got two limited linebackers playing more than um, Pup Howard. I don't want to talk about it. Don't get me going. Uh, I, it has to be him. It has to be. Some, something's not clicking. I don't uh, understand it. For, uh, for somebody of his his stature coming in. I should, right? It's like, right. Yeah. So, something's, not, something's not jamming there uh in practice has yeah. to be that was the first thing i saw when when i saw the production from debo i saw they put him bam i'm like oh yeah i don't see howard out there anyway <laughs> no what <laughs> it, it is what it's so those three gentlemen i think we're gonna see a little bit more of them these next two games right because yeah. like we said it's a little bit easier and if they do play well hey who knows maybe these are guys that are getting you know 50 percent snap share come the end of the year, these last two bigger games that are coming up. All right. Looking ahead to the uh, the Battle of Gamecocks, as you would say. I didn't even think about it until just now. 
But what are your thoughts here on this noon game on, on ESPNU? To my knowledge, it's the first two times they played. I ever. believe so. I believe it's the first time they've ever played. Which, well, to me, I, I can't specifically say this. I have no further knowledge of this. This has to be the first time where two teams with the Gamecocks nickname has played each other. I yeah. fi- it God. feels right. It yeah. feels right. Yeah. And I'm willing to bet they'll have a graphic up for that during the game on Saturday. So we'll see. Uh, but Jacksonville State, I've been a fan of them this season from yes. a gambling perspective because yes. they have covered a lot. Yes. Almost every game they've played, they've covered. Uh, they're 7-2 overall this year, 5-1 and one in Conference USA. This is their first year in the FBS coming up uh, from FCS last year. They can't play in a bowl game this year right. Right. or win the conference title, which is NCAA horseshit. They should win it because they're going to win it outright. Yeah, that they, they, they could win. Conf- James Madison and Jacksonville State could both win their conferences outright this year and won't even be able to play in a conference a championship or a bowl game. Yep. It's, it's it's complete Trash. dog shit. Uh, this is your typical Rich Rodriguez offense. They're going to run from all angles to set up the big pass play. That's what they do. They average over five yards a carry. They they'll trot out two quarterbacks. Zion Webb's the bigger uh, run threat. Logan Smothers can throw, but he can also run a little bit. He transferred from Nebraska, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, he did. He did, he did yes. Uh, their top rusher is Malik Jackson. He's got 615 yards, four touchdowns on the year. Uh, Zion Webb has 460 yards rushing and four touchdowns, including 271 yards and three touchdowns in the last two games. Um, that, like I said, they don't throw a lot, but Perry Carter's their main guy. He's caught 20 balls for 352 yards and two touchdowns. He's averaging almost 18 yards a catch. Uh, to me, their best overall prospect at all from an NFL perspective is their interior offensive lineman, Clay Webb. He's a, a racer in the run game. He's a so-so pass blocker. They don't have to do it a lot. No. Uh, this defense is very dependent on the turnover, yes. which is why it's going to – to win this game like they should, it's going to be very dependent on Spencer Rattler just staying within himself. Yep. Uh, they've got 11 interceptions this year. They've forced five oh, – they've recovered five fumbles. They've forced way more than that. They've only been able to jump on five. Uh, I'm a big fan of their safety, Colby Fuqua. I think he's their top defensive prospect. You like Quay Drake, their uh, senior linebacker, who's got 23 solo tackles and good in coverage, uh, but 20-plus run stops this year. Yeah, uh, I think he's he's a senior bowl candidate. Like, he's a guy yeah. I could see, you know, it, it, possibly now you're giving a you know, last-minute invite to and saying, hey, or being a being – a, um, uh, Injury sub. Yeah, yeah, like like who was it last year? It was um, – it was a running back came in. I know who you're talking about, but – Texas Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Sir Roderick Thompson. Yes, yeah, and he played well. He played yeah. well in the time that he came in. So, like, you you never know. I just feel like he's a guy um, that that does what. There was a there was a term for those. They're called gas tank guys. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You know, you, on Thursday, you need a player who's within a tank of gas that can drive here. Yep, that's, and he's that's... he's gonna be that guy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, I, I, some guy to watch out for. I think your guy, um, Kobe, he's a guy. He flies around out there. If you ain't paying attention, the next thing you know, you're getting up looking out the side of your helmet. So, all right, prediction time before we wrap this up. I think we win. I know it's what 15 and a half. Is 15 and a half is the line. I don't think they cover. I'm going to go South Carolina 30. Jacksonville State is very good at that. Yeah, yeah. Jacksonville State 20. I think they, they, they get a late score to cover the spread when, you know, because if they're up early, I honestly think they're just going to try to keep Rattler safe, right? Try to pound the ball, just wear the time off. He's taking so many hits already. He Try to save him for at least the last couple of games. This line has moved two full points since Sunday. Up or down? Up. It really? started at 13 and a half. There's a lot of action. Coming wow. in on the South Everyone. Carolina Gamecocks this week. Yeah. Uh, the line has moved two points since Sunday. I think they win this one big. Okay. I think their skill players are going to overwhelm the lack of skill players in the Jacksonville State defense. I think Rattler has a big day. I already said Harbor's going to go over a buck. I think Anderson's going to go over a buck in this game. I think we're looking at – and by the way, We've talked about it. 
the last couple shows, the home and road splits yeah. for this team are crazy. Rattlers back at home. Give me South Carolina 45 to 24. I think they cover the 15 and a half. I think we get a big game. Rattler 280, three right. touchdowns. Harbor gets a gets gets a dollar there. I think uh I think we even see some Lenora sellers this week. I'm cool with I guess. That. And yes. I think Mario Anderson uh gets over hundred as well. 45 24 Gamecocks. I, I like it. Three touchdown score. I, I'm I I can't complain about it. I can't say you're crazy. I just Jackson State somehow finds a way to hang they around. Do. Right? They do. I don't do. know how they do it. If it's a shootout, they they find a way to put the points up. If it's a tight game, they find a way to play tight defense. I kudos to them. You mentioned Rodriguez, right? Was he at West Virginia with Slayton and Pat yes. White? Yeah, yes. see that that that's that was that was Madden type stuff. That was NCAA. Like you could do that, anything you want. That, that that was you playing with them on NCAA and beating the crap out of everybody you played because nobody else could figure out how to stop an option. Nobody, you could, and they were both yeah. fast as hell between Pat White and Slayton. Who who was the wide receiver? They also had Noel Divine. On that's that team. it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They were all back. speed, straight yeah. speed. Right. It was Slayton at wide receiver, Divine at running back, and Pat White, and you just couldn't stop any of them because. They would just run the option and either dump it to the vinyl or throw a quick out to, to slay it, and he was gone. Pat White's a local uh, kid here to Mobile. Oh, he must be a legend. Yeah, Daphne High School is right across the right across the bay from Mobile. Does he own every record? He's got to own every record now. I it? would assume so. <laughs> <laughs> he was electric, man. He just never yeah. never panned out to the next level. But, yeah, Rich Rodgers. Ahead of his time. Ahead of his time. Yeah, hey, I, I've been saying it about Doug Flutie was ahead of his time, right? Doug Flutie right now would be a guy. Charlie Ward right now would be a guy in, in the style of NFL. Who's the quarterback at Georgia Tech? Joe Hamilton. Oh, geez. you imagine how good Joe Hamilton could be right in today's NFL? Insane. As accurate as he was. Tyrod Taylor, right? Come if he, like right. out of, coming out of college. I know he's in the NFL now, but when he came out of college, yeah. right? He was well ahead of this mobile QB thing. I think at that time, coming out of college, if you would put him in a system right now, whoo, wow, he would be a dude. <laughs> yeah. But it is what it is. We've come to that point. Right about that 45-minute mark. We try to say it a half hour. We get excited, right? Some things well, really get us. I, I was thinking about this, and I think our first few shows were at half hour because we didn't, we hadn't figured out that we like to talk a lot about this stuff. <laughs> and then as we've gotten further along, we're like, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're just, we're, we're both talkers, and that's just what happened. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and it's not like we're just babbling. We're giving them good information. Yeah. We're breaking it down, but we're passionate. Okay, and, and I'm not gonna lie. If you know me, you know my teams are BC, right, Oregon, and, and, and Kentucky. I'm slowly coming around here. Like I, I've watched every game this year for them, and, and the Gamecocks are wearing. I mean, it hurts me. It's hard to say that because I'm a, I'm a Wildcats fan, you know, and, and they're in the SEC. But uh, I was a fan of Rattler when he was at OU. I was a fan of him when he, you know. Because I felt like the kid got a lot of crap coming out of Netflix <laughs> and 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 going on right. And, I and, never watched that. Ah, oh, poor kid. He's some the people around him put him in a bad position, right? To start to start out. But I'm hoping we can turn around these last four games and we can give you guys something positive to talk about on the Garnet Roost. My guy Brian Bosage, Deep Fried Draft. I'm Nino Brown. This is CFB Nation. We'll catch you guys on the flip side.